Three, two, one. The world we knew it is long gone. We all expected a nuclear war, an epidemic, or even an apocalypse to be the end of us. But they never came. Rather, for reasons still uncertain, our population shrank. Suddenly, fewer and fewer births, paired with higher and higher death rates, brought our population to its knees. No simple answer to our decay. We simply shrank. But here behind the walls, protecting Florence from the outside world and underneath the leadership of the Citadel, we persist. Welcome, everyone, to Morbid Tales, where we present plethoras of terrifying tales and awesome adventures for your viewing eyes. I am Dwayne at Made of Kimchi, and I will be your machinist for this tale. Now, this evening, we will be presenting the final installment of the new Kickstarter, Necrobiotic, which is brought to you by Penny for a Tail, which has five days left on its Kickstarter. I do believe the last time I looked at it, it was up to 43,000. I do believe the next stretch goal is at 45? I'll have to double check. But they are pretty it close is, to their... Is it 45? It's 45, and I believe 45 is... Uh, Noir? Noir, yeah. Yeah, so if you guys want to get a cool story written by the myth, the man, the myth, the legend, Noir, make sure you guys stop into the Kickstarter for Necrobiotic within the next five days and uh, give anything you can. Help some people's out. But for all of you that love what we do, make sure you guys seek us out on the internet. And don't forget to follow us here on Twitch. Check out our archives and our YouTube. And make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. Visit our webpage, warpletales.com. The links to all of our social media, our Discord, and if you are so inclined to toss us a coin, our Patreon. Check out our calendar to ensure you don't miss any of your favorite shows. Instead of the normal <clears throat> stuff that I would talk about, we're going to talk about Onyx Pass Con starting next week next weekend i should say june 11th 12th and 13th make sure you guys head over to onyx pass publishing and uh check out the schedule to where you too can participate in games if you are so privy to that type of thing uh i think i can type i think that's the right one no it's not Ah, there you go. But yes, we will be participating in all types of different games spread across four different channels. Uh, Onyx Path Publishing, obviously, uh, Cultist Anonymous, uh, Plastic Age Plays, and Dork Tales. And of course, us. We will all be participating in different games, so make sure you guys do check out that schedule to see all of your favorite peoples playing all the different games that they have to offer. It's going to be Story Path, it's going to be 5e, it's going to be World of Darkness, it's going to be Chronicles of Darkness. And then there's going to be all kinds of different panels on Onyx Path's channel. Make sure you guys do stop in and check that out. However, our shout outs tonight go to Ash Tabletop for the virtual gaming space that we play all of our games in. And of course, the special thank you also goes to Penny for a Tail for providing us with this awesome Kickstarter so that we can show you all uh, the beginnings of their awesome child much love goes to any mid for the custom character sheets that you too can use if you use astral tabletop and a thank you goes to love your rebellion a non-profit group that empowers marginalized groups through the arts make sure you check out their website loveyourrebellion.org as always much love goes to our patreons your love and support helps us uh feed not only us but all of the furry creatures that also live with us and last but not least, thank you to all of our viewers and our fans, because we love you so much. So, before we get into this final episode of this here Kickstarter, let's uh, hear from their players. Tell us, everyone, who you are and who you'll be playing this evening. Uh, hi, all. I'm Devin. You can find me online at Sort of Sullied. And uh, tonight, I will be playing Brock, uh, the uh, techno fan. Um, hey, folks. I am JT. And tonight, I will be playing Ren, the architect. 
I am Zachary Nalder, he, him. I'm going to be playing Jebediah, the militia. Also, he, him. Um, let's kill something. Yeah. This will be your chance. <laughs> I am Kisama. Triumphantly here after technical difficulties, and tonight I will be playing Icarus, the techno sophist. Spectacular. <clears throat> Before we get into the game, let's talk a little bit about what happened last time, because it has been a whole week. Uh, I don't believe we were taking any type of recap for this game, so I will do it for you guys. A lot of investigation. Oh. <laughs> a lot of investigation was had. You guys uh, not only had investigated the site of where the of the body of a Yigwe was discovered, finding different uh, bits and pieces of information that all led in one way or another to this place called the Limon, which was a high class restaurant slash club night bar or nightclub bar <laughs> uh, in the Florin Florinian foothills. We also learned that uh, Once you had gotten there, after you had passed all of your information back to the Citadel, once you had gotten there, you had pretty much come up on a large group of what looked like scientists from the Citadel of Science themselves, talking about how the constructs that have been created are, uh, you know, whether or not they actually have memories or their souls are lingering. It seemed to be a large discussion that was going on and on and on. Strategically placing yourselves throughout the the Limon, you were able to learn that the owner, the Livio Fili, was upstairs with his family and uh, was not to be bothered. However, through some not so eloquent <laughs> uh, persuasion and uh, social manipulation roles, you were able to get past some of the bodyguards that were guarding the upstairs and they had placed you in his office to wait until you, uh, he came. Jebediah stayed downstairs at the bar uh, noticing a lot of uh, a lot more bodyguards in a in eating establishments uh, than should be there. You had talked with a couple of the locals, kind of got an idea and a feel for the man who was running this place. You also learned that uh, the jukebox that you had heard so many times was not exactly a jukebox, but a construct that when turned on, came to life and sang very beautiful songs. Something that most people thought a construct was not able to do. Uh, nevertheless, time goes by while you guys are chilling in the Limon. However, just when you think everything is fine and dandy and you're about to meet up with the owner, you hear footsteps outside his office where uh, most of you are gathered Jebediah you see a man rushing down the stairs and he bursts into the room where all of the scientists were having their conversation and uh, he starts to berate them and accuse them of treachery and just at that point the back room door where a couple of these big goons were standing burst open as they are quickly knocked to the floor and other constructs enter. That is where we faded out, where you guys were kind of like, oh damn, this is about to go down. So like I said, as this restaurant owner is, he's pointing to the scientists at the table, 
and he's, he's berating them about you know how it's all their fault, fault and they're profiting off of the tormented souls of the deceased. Uh, and he, he points back at the jukebox saying how he's making everyone laugh at her. And he's like, but no more. I've had enough of this. And like he snaps his fingers, just like I said, the back doors of that room where they were eating burst open, knocking two of the bodyguards down and two constructs jump in. Now these, uh, actually none of you would notice this right away. So we will leave it at that. However, as these uh, constructs jump in, two of them start to go and attack these scientists. While some of the, uh, the big bodyguards get back up, try to fend themselves off. So, so to be clear, the vibe that we're getting from the situation is that these scientists are the ones behind. From what we, from as far as we know, from what it sounds like from the conversation, they're the ones behind the LSD in the brain of vats, in the vat of the brains, in the, um, they're the ones probably supplying the guy that I was interrogating with the LSD, and they're likely the ones, that would be a reasonable assumption. Yes, you, re you remember from the, the the conversation that they were having when you guys had first entered the, uh, the establishment, how they were talking about, you know, yes, these constructs are having these violent hysterical episodes, and it's probably just related to the anguish and confusion suffered during their reawakening. It's nothing to be concerned about. You know, there's, there's no such thing as, you know, you know, reliving memories and blah, blah, blah. But when uh, Livio comes downstairs and points them out, he clearly states that, you know, based on what you said, I gave them the LSD and they remembered. But then the bodies weren't who he was expecting. They acted completely different. Now, whether they were the constructs that he had requested is unknown. I think anybody really knows what a construct goes through when this LSD hits their system. But he believed them to be his wife and his son. Um, I'm still the only one, like, because everybody else has not yet made it downstairs. I'm the only one really with a view of the room then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, um, right when right when he was started yelling, a lot of the patrons started finishing up their drinks and started walking out, and you're still far, kind of like, all right, all right. Um, so I'm going to head towards the room, and does it look like any of the bodyguards or the scientists are coming after him directly? <clears throat> no, no, they're trying to like a couple of the bodyguards are trying to pull this construct off of. Uh, so there are four scientists three bodyguards in that room and three of the bodyguards are all trying to pull off constructs one of the scientists is already killed okay um he pretty much got a big old knife now when you when you go over there and you kind of get a good look at it you realize that one of these constructs is not standard issue i guess in your eyes you you know a construct when you see it But this is so, like an illegal, high-powered construct with very heavy armor, uh, and its limbs are, you know, various metal blades and appendages. Um, so, how long were we uh, in the room before any of this happened? Upstairs. We're probably only in there about ten or fifteen minutes. Um, would it be allowed to have? I was planning on on loading my armor and wearing it anyway. Uh, when I have a time frame that I have to actually start putting the armor on, that's what I'm asking. Would I be allowed to have uh, 
started enacting my plan because I had planned on unloading my armor and been wearing it when he came in. Yeah, if you wanted to, you know, because they left you alone in that office, you would have been able to start unpacking and gearing up. All right, perfect. Thank you. I'm going to um, head over and towards Livio. I'm like, I'm with the Citadel Militia. If, if you're willing to testify that these scientists were um, you know, these scientists were acting nefariously, I will make sure that we get them into custody and get them the proper authorities. He was like, he just looks at you. He's like, they must pay. They're not going to go to the authorities. They are the authority. And then he just kind of points at a uh, at a uh, Professor Ezio. If you kill them all, then I can't interrogate the any of them to find out who else is involved that you might not know about. So you just want me to stand here and keep in mind this as the whole thing is going on, this battle is ensuing. <laughs> You're just standing like <laughs> you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. That man's dying over there. I just want one to bring in. I don't care about, there. there's three more that you can do what you will with. They resisted. Just need one. Just need one? And then he points to the, uh, like the engineer looking guy, the one that, uh, I can't remember Key's name. Icarus, right? Yes. Icarus. Yes, the one that the one that Icarus and Ren recognized as the uh, the engineer that had spoken to you guys right before you had left the Citadel. It's like, well, what about him? How do I know that he will be brought to justice? He's the one who sent you here. I mean, you can pick which one. I don't care. It's up to you. I just want one. I don't care what you want. I want justice, and they deserve to die. He just stands there. <sighs> then I'm gonna hit him with a damn stun gun. Nice stun baton. All right. What are the rest of you going to do as you like hear this you hear clanging of glasses, uh, muffled screams? Uh, the two bodyguards that were at the top of the stairs guarding it have long started rushing down the stairs. I I think I will uh, open the door and activate one of my uh, weapon powers. Well, suit powers. Uh, the uh, pellet that basically lets me uh, run at 50 miles an hour. It's a uh, power assisted thrust. So you want to get down there quick? Oh yeah, it lets me run to 50 miles an hour for a few minutes. All right. It's a very bad situation to be in. <laughs> that it is. Just turn to just Nedry, right? Chichi. Run. Run. Oh. Who's Nedry? That is a different game. <laughs> oh, this is a, everything's getting mixed up. Okay, yeah, Ren. I just looked to look to Ren. Just kind of like shrug. What are we gonna do? Um, gonna sort of light jog in the following direction, in the same direction. Icarus rolls his eyes and follows the others as he takes out his air taser. Okay, <clears throat> so going to get into the actual combat here. So like I said, one of the scientists has already gone down as this main like illegal construct. Probably 
uh, if you were to guess uh, Jebediah, it was probably uh, Livio's like main main bodyguard. As this thing, this thing's a powerhouse, and it just barrels into this room. Uh, and the first scientist that it sees, it just cuts him down. It's like a twirling razor blade. As it comes in with four different arms, just slashing different parts. You know, makes a big slash across the chest, starts bleeding out, gets him in the face, falls to the ground, does two stabs into him, and then it starts moving towards the next target. Uh, the other two constructs are... Uh, you can tell they're they're moving very erratically. You can tell that they're definitely under a, a heavy dose. Every now and again, they start to cry, like lucid anguishes. Um, they're being piled on by the three bodyguards that were in the back of the room. Uh, but every so often, it tries to like grab their head and like mainly going for like head attacks. It's trying to twist their head off like a like a jam top. Like a jar of jam. Lovely. So, uh, because you guys are coming right into the combat, um, they have already made their attacks, so to speak. So it would be your guys' turn now, since there is no initiative order. Uh, and I'll let you guys just go in the exact order that you said you wanted to do it. So, Jebediah, go ahead and uh, how do you want to hit this guy? I've got a stun truncheon, which does two damage and stun. And what did you pull on that one? Um, so, I'm not really sure how this works, because apparently the militia member doesn't have combat trained. <laughs> you should have at least close combat maybe no there's another yeah, no, um dexterity readiness reasoning interrogation tree search athletics and athletics is what i have trained oh let me double check here do 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 now that just means that I would only be able to play one card then? Correct. Unless you had something else that said you could play more cards. I, I, I do not have anything that lets me play more cards. Um, also, what does the Joker do? Now, <clears throat> so, for example, if you were using... this is This is how I would do it, because it doesn't specifically say... If you're using the, uh, are you talking about using your, your sonic truncheon? Yep. So because that's a, you know, like a physical beating stick, I would probably, uh, yeah, I, I would do combat and steel. Since I don't have combat, there's only one card, but what is the Joker? Is the Joker? Joker is an automatic success no matter what. Okay. But I can still only play one card. Can still only play one card. Okay, well, I have a three of diamonds, so I'm going to play that since it's in the right suit. Yes. I I'll, I'll get one success on sticking Livio with the sun stick. Now, since Livio has actually not done anything yet, he's going to try and... No, because I don't get the full cards. You just hit him, because that's a success. Woohoo! So he will take that two damage. I'm gonna get my notebook. And that is a two damage plus a stun, correct? Correct. So you kind of like pull back with this stick, shove it into him, kind of like a, you know, the old billy club. But once it hits him, it's like that sh shock charge of compressed air, and it hits him in the chest. Oh, um, t 
Tony did give me a boost, so if I could have that be two successes, just oh. to, to make it. That would thank be you, Tony. two successes. Um, so I'm not gonna. So I'm gonna like. Since when we finish our conversation, I'm, I'll just be like, "Fine, go for it. Let, kill them all. See if I care." And when he turns, just kind of reach in and in one smooth motion, just stick it right in. Just jab it right into his back. Right, like, between the shoulder blades. Uh, okay, yeah, so you want to use accuracy? Because your, your extra successes pretty much give you uh, you can place a yeah a, a condition on them. So for I, you guys, I would, it's, think, it's, I would think accuracy or persistence. Yeah. So, like, persistence of the stun. Persistence of the stun, we can do that, if you wanted to yep. do that. that okay. good to me. All right, so he will take that two damage and have persistent stun. Uh, he will be able to try and get out of it, but it's not something that you have to reapply if he doesn't do well. And I cannot find my sheet. Where are you at? There it is. Oh, where are you at, Livio? Livio, Livio, Livio. He's on the ground in shock because I just stunned him. Okay. Well... Surprisingly enough, Livio is not very strong. Livio is not getting up. With that stun being persistent, it's pretty much going to take him to zero. <laughs> He's not going to be getting back up. So he is pretty much. If you uh, keep that on for one more round, he's he's not going to be in the in the fight at all. He will be out of the fight. Works for me. All right, now uh, Brock. You were going to use your power pellet. Yes. Supercharge yeah. move down to get down there. Supercharge move to get down there. And I am just going to... Uh, that's uh, clubs, or is that spades? I forget. That is your gear, I do believe, correct? Yes. And that, that is, is spades. The spades. Okay, so yes, I will just uh, burn an ace. And All right. That'll be it. So you pop in one of your, your water pellets. It goes straight into the steam engine that's on your back, pretty much. And you jet fire or jet steam your way down the stairs. Uh, are you going to come to a halt right where Jebadaya is, kind of at the, the main entrance of this little dining area? Or are you kind of going to swing past him? And uh, I, I figured I would, uh, like swing past him but be stopping as i'm swinging past him you know that whole entire i see him as i'm heading there full speed and then hit the brakes so i skid past him but still stop for being in his area okay if it looks like he's going into the room further i'm let i'll just be like keep the scientists alive everything else is, is dangerous yes everything else is dangerous <laughs> cool <laughs> by the time you hit the bottom of the stairs is when the other two like you kind of fly past the other two uh, bodyguards that were coming down the stairs you kind of like weave right between them they're kind of awestruck for a second as they just see a, a blur of steam go past them. Uh, and not long after that, they kind of, you know, hit the entrance of this room and they're kind of in awe for a second. Not really sure what to do. They like just kind of the stand there. Instead, uh, to go down the stairs, I jump with one foot on the rail and one foot on the wall. Do a sick grind. Yeah, just do a sick grind the whole way down. All right. Got one of those. Sorry, I'm writing down my little. Uh... Yeah, I'm 
my initiative order, so I know. Okay. Now, uh, the other two, Ren and Icarus, you were just gonna slowly jog down the stairs, or you're gonna hightail it? I mean, like, there's st stuff going on, but I don't have a lot to do when I get there, and I'm that at that pace, if that makes sense. I want to know what's going on, but I don't have any weapons. Yeah, again, you hear you hear like the you know crashes of plates, uh, grunts of people trying to you know in like hand to hand combat. You hear one of the bodyguards that that had just arrived at the the the, the doorway entrance. Just kind of go, what the fuck? <laughs> and then uh. All the time, like immediately as this starts going, the construct jukebox starts to pull back to life again and starts singing her nice little opera tune. So not only do you have cool combat music going in your heads, you've got nice melody of opera going on in the background. Uh, Icarus, are you just going to follow Ren? I'm just following Ren. All right. So these area. scientists and constructs are going to go. The uh, three bodyguards that were in the back uh, were kind of fighting with the uh, the screaming constructs. Uh, they didn't really want anything to do with the uh, the big defense construct. Uh, two of them are able to kind of wrestle one of the aberrant constructs off of the uh, off of the scientist and the scientist kind of scrambles away underneath another table that was further on in the room so they kind of have this one pinned down you can see his arms coming up trying to grab their heads uh, the second aberrant construct is going for uh, another unknown scientist that you don't know however the defense one is going to take his movement to go towards uh, the engineer that you guys know. That, uh, what was his name? Bertoli. The one who had given you all the passes and whatnot while, while you were coming here. That is all of their turns. So now it is back to Jebediah. Uh, I think I'm going to take a shot at the um, construct that should... Well, I mean, all the constructs probably should not be, but the illegal construct that should not be. Uh, I'm going to uh, whip out the um, repeating crossbow okay. and uh, bust a shot at it. I believe it's not targeting me, from my understanding. It so. is not targeting you. Uh, I, 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 four of diamonds, is that going to be sufficient to... Uh, this is going to be... If you don't want to do combat, I will allow you, because it is a ranged weapon, I mm -hmm. will allow dexterity if you wish. Mm. If you have it. Well, extra... Well, extra damage give me, or extra successes give me more. It will not give you more damage. You only get to uh, you apply could, like, cripple right. him. Yeah, you could. Uh, again, you can make it more accurate. So you can try and like shoot his leg off. Uh, you can, if you have an, uh, an effect, you can extend it. But this wouldn't really apply to that. So I will use then very uh, dexterity. Six of clubs and the queen of spades is worth two. Uh, so oh. that should give me eight total. And then a, for a club, that should give me another. So that's a, an extra success. Okay. What I would like to use on accuracy. Um, I want to try to... He, he's generally attacking with the, the arm. With, with yes, it's got four. Face. It has... 
you know, like four regular arm or two regular arms, and then it has two other like mechanical arms. So it's kind of like a half spider looking thing. Uh, the the goal is to hopefully damage one sufficiently, okay, so that it, it is down in an attacking arm. So uh, if that's accuracy, yes. Um, and then that's so three damage, is correct? Yep. Three right. damage that is lethal. I don't know if that makes a difference here. Uh, but. Against a person, yes. That <laughs> would be. Uh, against constructs, not so much. Especially one of this caliber. Uh, but, but you, yeah, you do hit it. <clears throat> it does take that damage, and you are able to, you kind of hit it in a, in an area just shy of you know, the, the shoulder joint and your crossbow bolt kind of sticks into it. So when it tries to swing down as it's going past people, it just kind of stops and it's not able to function anywhere. You can hear it like going as like the gears grind. Your bolt actually kind of gets stuck in the gears and then it's just kind of stuck there. It doesn't fall off or anything, but it's not moving. So I guess if it wanted to, it could just kind of throw itself and still use it. But <laughs> as far as uh, physically it's still technically moving it, a functional arm, just not a, a well-functional arm. Right. Uh, Brock. Uh, so are these? Uh, how many of these constructs are considered close to one another right now? Uh, the defense construct is separate uh, from most of the group as it's going after one of the lead scientists, the uh, engineer. The other two are fairly close to each other within 5-10 feet. Okay, so then I'm going to go after them because uh, I'm going to spend another pellet and activate uh, my uh, extrusion blades uh, which uh, gives me the ability to hit both of them uh, since they're in close proximity and when it, by hitting it does uh, four damage. Now one of them is pinned down by some of the uh, some of the bodyguards so it's going to be a lot easier to hit. Okay so I'll start with that one and it automatically gives me the success to hit the nearby person. Right. So uh, and I'll just uh, You're just gonna throw the joker? Yep, I'll throw the joker. And what is the damage on your uh, blades? Four. So both of them get hit for four damage. Okay. So you kind of slice in against now you have you've fought construct before. Sometimes when when they go on the fritz, uh, they do call you guys in to put them down. And you know these are, you know, they're they're machines for the most part. They do have some human components, but for all intents and purposes, they are machines. So when you go and you slice these, uh, it's kind of like metal on metal. Uh, in some places, you do see some of the the leatherish skin tear off. Uh, some uh, mechanical fluid kind of sprays out, but these things are still moving. And uh, it leaves us with Bren. Yeah, so I don't have any weapons. Um, so I don't know what to do here, frankly. You are the architect, correct? Yes. Uh, there are... I mean, just because you don't have a weapon doesn't mean you can't do anything. Well, uh, how many weapons are on the ground from dead people? Well, the only person that's dead is one of the scientists so far, so... <laughs> so far. So um, far. I'm going to point down and yell, check him. He probably has a weapon pointing at the uh, Livio. 
If not, just kick him in the head so he doesn't get up. Um. Yeah, can I? I have an investigation. Is that can I search? Yes, you could. You could search Livio if you wanted to. Yeah. Um. He's. Uh, I'm just gonna pull an ace of clubs. One success, okay. and uh, I figure that's enough for someone who's pretty much unconscious. Yeah, and unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be pretty easy. So I'm looking for a weapon, but also if there's anything else interesting on on this person that would be need to know. Uh, he does have a like a kind of like a billy club, like a sap. And there's not a whole lot of people that carry lethal weapons in this world, mainly because it's very, very bad to kill people. Really the only only ones that carry lethal weapons are militia and the uh, technophons. But uh, he he does have this this sap that you could use as a club. Uh, and actually, on his body, when you're looking through and you find that he's kind of like you know slumped on the ground, the sap's underneath him. Uh, as you're pulling it out, his jacket comes undone a little bit, and uh, a little tape falls out, like a like an old school cassette tape. I will. Uh, I'll kind of grab it and I'll show it to Chris. Sort of like told me how like do you know what to do with this. Icarus, do you know what to do with a tape? With a what? With like a like an old school cassette tape. Oh shoot! Mm. Like a you know don't degauze it. <laughs> ah. One of those. <laughs> A record of the ancients. Snatch it from him. Jam in your pocket. Look at that later. <laughs> yeah. Now we got bigger issues. And I will grab the sap too on my turn. That's right. I'll gotcha. turn so. uh, Anything from Icarus? Ah. I think. Icarus would take his drone mm-hmm. and try to attack some of the constructs with it. Can you do that with your around. drone? I don't know. Can I? <laughs> Can I let me check them with my drone? Just like ram into I mean, them. Ram speed. <laughs> if you just if you just smash the drone into something, it's got to do something, right? The drone may not hold up well. Yeah. It doesn't have far hitting, but can I ram with it? Uh, nothing says I can. Nothing says I can't. Nothing says you can, and nothing says you can't. So that's my plan. Would it work? Okay. So uh, I, I'm going to allow this. I am going to need two successes from you on two different things. Oh. One is going to be your uh, your Accio piloting to actually move it through the fray. All right. Or your your Ar- Arcaio. Yeah. Yeah. My Arcaio piloting. Yes. So I've got a seven of spades and then an ace of hearts. So that's two successes total. Okay. Two successes on that. Got it. All right. I was going to need an, another, a different one, but okay. That'll work fine for now. So, so it, doesn't, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have far hitting? It does not have far hitting by default. Could I have given it far hitting over the course of an hour, like putting <laughs> spikes on the front of it? <laughs> If you wanted to retcon that, uh, what is that? The so, ramrod. <laughs> the ramrod. Yeah. Just like a spades for a success. Doing that. If you if can chuck out, if you can chuck out another spade, and make that three successes total, I will allow you to have uh, retroactively at least fit some type of spike 
onto your uh now this would take so, away because you can only have two correct you can only have two things on it uh in theory i could have three at yeah. most and then it becomes logically and like logistically impossible got it since i'd only be able to get three successes on any check well you could remove greater vision I could remove greater vision, or I could remove sturdy, which feels appropriate. Does it, does it still have an explosive connected to it? I do not have any explosives connected to it, but that would be good. Cool. <laughs> no more explosives. Uh, all right, so if you, we'll do it this way. If you take off the, en- the enhanced vision uh, and add on the far hitting, it will be able to uh, to attack for two damage and a condition. Uh, for two rounds, just as it says, two charges. Yeah, yeah. before it just can't attack anymore. Yeah, pretty much the spikes are gonna come out on it. Yeah, too much brute force trauma to the drone. Okay, so one now success. which one are you going to go after? Is the question. Hmm. Ah. Uh gonna go for the biggest target the one that's like doing the most damage here so the defense oh. one so the defense one yeah all right since it does two damage and a trauma it's gonna take that down to that and it takes a trauma Or, or actually, or do you want it to be a condition? A condition or a trauma? Say stunned, the condition. All right, so no trauma, but it is stunned. It's distracted with this weird bug looking thing running at it with spikes. All right, so it will be stunned until it can get rid of that stun. Uh, the two bodyguards that were still standing at the entryway uh, run in. One of them diving on top of the other uh, at the moment, not as lethal construct. Not the one that is being pinned down, uh, but he goes and helps the third uh, bodyguard from the room and they go to pin down the other construct. Uh, they don't succeed as well, and one of them uh, is just kind of like wraps it around the waist and is trying to wrestle it to the ground. Uh, its entire body turns around to a 180. It looks down at him and just kind of picks him up by his head. It just turns, 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 and then it just kind of goes pop. And he throws the head across the room. Body goes limp on the ground. Uh, the last bodyguard actually goes after Ren. It's like, hey, leave my boss alone. And uh, he's just gonna try and hit you with his, he has a little little club. So for you, uh, if you wanna get out of the way or take the trauma, actually, you've already acted, haven't you? Yeah, I already acted. Uh, in theory, maybe I could use dexterity or something to. But I already acted, so I don't know how that works. So, let me so check. this bodyguard is defending Livio? Yes. Interesting. Are they. Is this bodyguard dressed differently than the other bodyguards? Yes. They are still all wearing black. Uh, you know, the black, you know, nice black suits. Uh, but instead this, of a, a white shirt underneath, he has a black shirt underneath. He's not, he does not have the chrysanthemum. Yes, he does. Oh. They all do. Even some of the scientists do. Now that you're like looking around the room. Maybe a strange order. Ooh. 
Uh, yes. So if you if you have already taken your action, you cannot uh, take like a reaction. So you will just have to take this hit. However, with you being the architect, you should be able to uh, soak up trauma. Aren't you able to do that? You have a lot of things that soak up trauma. I can heal trauma. Uh, let me see. First, let's yeah. see what this guy is going to hit you with. Okay. All right, so this is going to be... This is actually... Oh, wow. That's nice. So this is going to be a similar to uh, the Militia's Sonic Truncheon, but because it's a sap, it's more on the mental side. It's going for your, like, your fortitude and stuff like that, which I guess is still steel. So this is going to be one steel trauma. Hmm? Huh? So we just, like, wax you. Like, wax you in the oh. back of the head. <laughs> So, you know, you get like a little dazed, but you're you're hardy enough to where it's not gonna not gonna do anything. Remember, one trauma is no big deal. It's only once you start getting into two and three that uh, you'll have any penalties. Sure. And uh, that is all of those guys. So then we go back to the robots. The actual uh, defense robot, not robot, defense construct, I am sorry. That is, that is the wrong term for these creatures. Uh, the defense construct goes for your quote unquote fellow citadelian, uh, Bertoli. And this turret be fit for totally guy. Not bad. All right. So Bertoli is going to take a trauma as well. But he is an architect like you, Ren. So he will be able to hopefully heal himself. Hopefully. But now he is in the fight. So being an architect just like you. He is going to. Uh, try to uh, as this thing is kind of like slicing and stabbing at him. He's trying to pull around to the back of it. He's going to try and uh, try and get into the processing, try and shut this thing down. Because as an architect, you can uh, access the programming of constructs and set up non-standard tasks or inspect commands. Isn't the, the big one, wasn't it stunned by Icarus's drone? It was. It could not have slashed. See, that's what, see, that's what I have you guys for. So he does nothing. Takes no damage. Totally is still good, but he's still gonna try and shut this thing down. Which is gonna be even easier because it's not moving. That's nice of him to help us out. Yes. Well he doesn't want to die. Yeah, most people don't. Uh the third scientist. So you have the one that uh you have one underneath the table, one is dead, the third other scientist who was uh named as sorry guys, I have like nine different and my phone's going off. Quiet. Was it that was the other guy. I cannot think of his name, but the other guy who is important. Ezio. <laughs> Uh, he starts to break for the doorway. He's like getting the hell out of here. 
uh, one of the aberrants uh, kind of try and grab for him, but he gets out of their grasp. Uh, the other aberrant is unable to do anything as it is still pinned down by the two uh, the two bodyguards. So that brings us back to Jibadiah. Um. So it, it, if there is suitable time, uh, I'm going to warn the scientist to stay with me because Livio's bodyguards might try to take him out. And I also want to shoot the big ugly. The big ugly? Yes. All right. So, so do I have, am I able to pull off both of those? Uh, yes, yeah. Speaking to someone is kind of like free. Okay. Unless you're trying to do something like, unless you're trying to intimidate him or something like that, then that's going to be that wouldn't be something you could do in the same round because that'd pretty much be like grabbing him and being like, you need to stay here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just... I- I'm not going to put any effort to making him stay. I- I'm focusing on shooting the big ugly. All right. Because this is stunned... Uh... I would allow you to, if you had more than one success, instead of inducing a condition, I would allow you to uh, do the uh, injury twice instead of once. No. Oh. Um, so then, what's the limit to number of cards I can play? Uh, you can only play two. If, if it's a skill two. you have, if you have the skill, you can only play two. You can okay. only ever play two cards. Um, still dexterity though? Yes, because it is shooting. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do the Seven of Clubs and Ace of Hearts so that I get two successes on that one. All right. So this thing will take the full brunt of these crossbow bolts. Damn right he will. Another six. You can see, like, it's hitting some of the the pipes that run through the construct's body. Uh, More of the tanned skin kind of tears off. Uh, You actually hit it in the face uh, with one of your shots and kind of veers off, but it's just enough to hit, like, the ocular, even though they're they're totally no-faced so that they're, they're dissociated from people anymore. People don't see them as individuals. They still have optical, you know, sensors underneath, and it kind of rips through the the tanned skin, and you see like just the redness of like one optical nerve, optical sensor sticking out. But it is still stunned until it can get out. Uh, but I will let you guys know this is a beefy thing. Uh, next goes to Brock. So, how are the two that are still next to me? They're not as beefy, but they're still... Like, these things are... Think of them as normal constructs that are on speed. Mm-hmm. These things have been given high doses of LSD. These are... Not that you would know, but more out of character. This is probably the wife and son that Livio thought they were like these are the two constructs that he had given the LSD to because he wanted to relive oh. his life with his family and then now these things are going batshit crazy um so if I was to use my uh extrusion blades uh on just the one target would I be able to uh, since it's stunned would I be able to get extra anything on him yes the one that is pinned yes I would allow that all right uh, then can I go uh, full board on him? If you want to. And uh, what, what would you give if I had two successes? Uh, same as I said to Jebediah, you would be able okay. to uh, uh, apply the injury twice instead of uh, the injury and another condition. So then that would be eight damage. Correct. To that one.
you actually nick some uh, some other wires and uh, gears that were kind of inside the ab abdomen. And uh, you see it start to stutter. It's still going and it, and it kind of, you hear it scream. Something that you've never heard ever. It's, it's not like a, not a human scream. It's more as if a computer, it's like a, something only Devin would know. It's like the old, it's like, well, because, you know, this wasn't in the future. This, you, this is something you would have never heard, but it sounds like, uh, you know, like an old 56K modem. Dial up. I yeah. knew what you were going it's, for. It's like that, yeah. It's like 56K dial up modem uh, scream. Will forever that's, that's, live in the back <laughs> That's of my what mind. it sounds like. It will forever haunt my dreams. All right, uh, that brings us to Jebediah, or no, uh, Ren, sorry. Um, hmm. I don't really want to do any, like, not, comments, not my thing. Like, I will defend myself. Now, or, or the thing hit me from behind, right? Yeah, this guy kind of, like, just <laughs> whacked you in the back of the head. <laughs> so I'm going to spin around and hit him back. Okay. Uh, oh my great! I don't have combat. This is gonna be, but it will be diamonds. One success. All right, one success. That was uh, I give you a sap, right? Yeah. Sappy. Uh, these guys are just as. Kind of just as trained as you guys are, uh, but not as hardy. You guys have at least seen combat once, as you guys are part of that part of that special group. And uh, it will take the one trauma from your sap, but uh, he's going to have a negative already. He tries to do it again. <clears throat> so you hit him and you kind of like you hit him in the side like in the ear like come around swing up hit him in the ear and you can see that he's like Ugh! and it kind of like dazzles him it's like why'd you just slap me in the ear kind of kind of thing Icarus why do you think I just did that <laughs> how close is Ren and his assailant to me Icarus. Not the I assume you guys Icarus. are just kind of all standing in this, you know, it's like a giant double door entryway to this little sitting area. I may not have combat, but I do have a couple diamonds in my hand. So I'd like to immediately after ramming with the drone, just turn with the air taser, point towards the guy who just got smacked across the head. Uh -huh. and fire the taser. <laughs> shoot him right in the head. All right. Not even like fully looking away, just like kind of glancing up for a second. Uh, four of diamonds. Four of so diamonds. Success. I will do it. What is your uh, What is your air taser damage? damage and stun? All right. Well, that is one charge of my taser. That was all it took. Like I said, these guys are uh, they are just humans. They are not constructs. Uh, so that guy goes down. And you turn it around, you hear a like a little whoop, and he just goes boom. And you just see his body go up. Oh. Uh, slumps to the ground. Let's get dark. Turn up some light. Ooh. Fancy. Yeah. Alright. So you still have the two that are holding down one of the constructs. One of them is dead. One of them is taken out. And then you have uh, one that's still wrestling with the, the second uh, aberrant construct. You have uh, one of the builders running out of the room. Ezio. And then you have uh, 
<clears throat> or Tolly, the engineer, uh, trying to power down this murder death machine. And it is going to take him one other round to power down said murder death machine as he's down there like messing around with the uh, dials and switches on the steam engine. At which point That is everybody. Yeah, so Ezio, the uh, the builder scientist, has darted out and he's heading towards the front door of the Lamone. Like he's gone. He's just running. He didn't listen to anything that Jebediah had to say. He just kept going. He didn't want anything to do with this. Now, the, uh, <clears throat> the aberrant construct that only has one of the bodyguards on him will uh, start fighting back. Yeah, bat almost flew in my window. <laughs> A vampire's return. I know. <laughs> Oh man! Wait, no, we can still see you if you're a vampire. It's just you can't see your reflection. Okay, it'll be cool. Uh, it starts fighting back with the uh, the bodyguard that was trying to wrestle it down. The other two bodyguards still have that one pinned, and they're just not letting it up. Uh, you hear more whimpering and crying from the uh, unnamed scientist hiding underneath the table. It's going on about how he doesn't want to die. How he doesn't want to die. And that brings us back to you guys. Uh, Jebediah has stepped away. So, Brock, why don't you go ahead and go? All right. So, uh, you said that uh, the one was well pinned. Yeah. The other one, one, of the, was... the one. The one that you have been shopping at, the one that is well pinned, it is still well pinned. Okay. So um, you're not getting up anytime soon. Then... Uh, I'm gonna go after the big guy then. Alright. And I'm going to, uh, use one card that I know isn't enough, but I'm going to burn this one to push the limit. And... Oh, yeah. Two successes for extra blades. Yep. Alright, cool. Two successes. So, because this is, uh, he is still stunned. So do you want to do, uh, do you want to do the double damage like I allowed you on the other one, or do you want to do the one injury and a condition? Uh, let's do the condition so I can get him stunned for one more round, so that gives the scientist guy time to turn it off. I like the way you're thinking. Yeah, so you slash into it, that is a total of four? All right, so you've pretty much like knocked past almost all of this armor that this thing has. Like I said, it is a very, uh, very high powered construct, very heavily armored. And uh, you take out another one of its uh, its arm blades, the lower left one. So now it really only has the upper left and the lower right. Uh, and you're just kind of like going to town. You nick off you know, some other pipes, stuff. Some of the steam is not hitting other uh, generators that it's supposed to as, as it's flowing through. So it starts to stutter a little bit and it will be stunned for that one more round. Sweet. Uh, Ren. The man that was beating you has been a uh, Taken out, and we lost. Uh oh! Somebody. Uh oh! Uh oh! Crisis. Oh no! Everything's in shambles. Oh, we're having technical difficulties. Zoom is not. Uh, it's not participating. 
about being nice to us. Well, I mean, it's participating. It's just participating in a craptastic way. Erratically, sporadically. But before we lost you there, uh, JT, we we're gonna let Ren go. Oh, I don't know what's going on for the past about forty-five seconds. Because <laughs> that's uh, like I a, tore into the big guy and stunned it for another round. Okay, and that uh, was for pretty much you. Yeah, okay, and then the guy that I had attacked last turn is real down, right? Down yes. Be- yeah, Icarus was able to uh, knock him out for you. Um, I kind of want to just go. So, is that all the major threats then, or pretty much down? Or am I missing something? Uh, major threats down. Yes. I mean, the the big bladed one is stunned for another round. Right. Uh. One of the minor constructs is pinned and probably isn't going to be getting up. Yeah. Uh, um, however, the the second normal construct is still fighting with one individual, so it's not pinned, but it could come and make your day bad. Um. I don't. My sap isn't going to do fuck all to a construct. I feel like not really. I don't know, just in my head, like mechanically, maybe it does something, but like in my head, like hitting a construct with a sap just <laughs> seems super silly. It's um, so. So, uh, enemies have two different levels of health. They have two different health levels. They have stress and they have trauma. So, if you actually inflict trauma, it's a lot easier to kill them. Like, if it's an actual, like, if it's just damage, it goes against their like their their body stress. So like this uh, this murder death machine has a a twenty stress. So it takes a little bit to get down, but it only has four trauma. So if you can just get past the stress, it goes down pretty quick. Or if you have things that specifically inflict trauma, like keys. Uh, is it your air gun? No, it was the uh, your drone. Yes. Can specifically do either a condition or a trauma. So not only does it take down the stress, but it also takes down trauma. So it's all, it all depends on what you use. Because we have pre-mades, our weapons are limited, but I'm sure that when the Kickstarter comes out full, they'll have like a full weapon set that does, whether it's actual trauma to the body or some type of stress against the outer shell. Um, I'm doing it in my head to whatever makes sense. Sure. Because the uh, uh, the bodyguards have stress as well. Uh, but since you're beating them in the head with sticks, I'm going straight against the trauma. <laughs> I'm not enough. going against their body, <laughs> their body stress. I'm going straight to trauma to the head. Gotcha. Um. Let's see. Then, what? I guess if there's a contract left, I guess I'll whack it in. I, I would know where to whack it with a sap. Yes, definitely. As as, definitely as an architect, oh. you would you would be able to know if you can give me. Uh, if you get two successes and you take the accuracy, I will give you an extra damage. Now what if I have no diamonds? <laughs> in my hand. <laughs> then uh I'm gonna have to get have to get a uh, You are either no, going uh, Yeah, you're either gonna have to take a take a breath and chuck your hand or think of something more creative than I can think of at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I got nothing. I'm gonna take a breath, man. Rest right. for a moment. Yeah. So check your cards and reveal your uh, six. Hopefully, you got something better. Um, for your next round, I could also suggest 
Um, because it's, it's obvious as these, these things are uh, screaming and going on and on, at least the, the two beaker constructs. Uh, they probably have that same LSD you know, thing that's been going on with other constructs. So you might be able to use your emergency pharmacology and, you know, you can find something that uh, alters that LSD. Remember the, uh, how we tried for the disinhibitor or the sensory diverter uh, when you guys were in, in the factor. I think Jason was playing your character that day. You're muted. Um, well, I redrew my hand and now I have no diamonds. <laughs> uh, do you have any spades? I have an ace and a two. All a right. Spade. So I would definitely um, look, start looking at your emergency ph uh, pharmacology for your next turn. Okay. And uh, just, I mean, I don't know. I personally don't know what any of these do. It says see object list for details, but I don't actually have that list. But uh, yeah, spend successes of the game freely. Uh, if you get one success, you could do an anesthetic to like, I'd count that as a stun. Stun it for a round. Uh, maybe your sensory, sensory diverter means that it, uh, it needs two successes to make an attack instead of one. Something like that. Some kind of weakening. So you can use your emergency pharmacology as a weapon to, like you're the debuffer. Think of it like that. You're gonna start debuffing these guys. Kinda in, in fixing up some bottles real quick and then jamming it into their tubes. Love jamming random things into tubes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. I'm sorry. I'm just... All right. The sense. Uh, sense his favorite pastimes: jamming yes. things into tubes. Uh, since Ren took a breath and redrew his hand, uh, it is now Icarus's turn. You still have one charge left on your drone. Would I be able to? pilot my drone using diamonds because it is an attack. Otherwise, I'm using an air taser. I have to say no. I would All like right. to say yes for you to do awesome stuff, but I have to say no. All right. Yeah. Because it specifically says this skill is for you to pilot your drone. Alright, yeah. Using it on... Big ugly. The big ugly. Your taser. With a queen of diamonds, which for me I believe is five. Double check. Yes. It is, yes. So that's five of diamonds, and I'm throwing away a two of hearts. It doesn't do anything for me, but I'm throwing it away. So I can play blind now. You're just uh, yeah. gonna play straight up blind I'm playing <laughs> blind because every time I draw a card playing blind. I get to draw two and pick one of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got that special ability. What is that? Is that your... Uh... That is one of my special oh, your ones. My you jack took your jack of space? Okay. Treasure awesome. every single experience in my life. Now nothing uh, catches so me off guard. So your taser does two damage and a stun, and you're doing that to the big bad again? Wow, man. This dude is stunned for two rounds. You guys are just keeping him stunned. Unlock for the win. Yes. Oh, Zach's back. Okay. Uh, we skipped over you, but yeah. it is now your turn. I figured. I figured. Um, so. You have uh, you have the big bad whirly death guy is now in uh -huh. a double stun, so he is going to be stunned for two rounds. All right. Uh, with the engineer trying to power him down or redo his... You don't know what he's doing. He's messing around with the switches and oops and bops on the back. Uh, you have the weaker construct, one weaker construct still being held down by 
two of the bodyguards. Uh, Icarus took one down, down one of the bodyguards. We still have one bodyguard fighting with the second weaker aberrant. Or, yeah, the aberrant construct. Any of the other scientists run off? Or? Uh, the one that you told to stay near you did not listen to you at all and just yep. ran and he's like out the front door. I, I, I did. I was able to hear for a while. Zoom just wouldn't let me do anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, up until right about where it would have been my turn and that's when it crashed. So, uh, but the other scientists that are there, like the, en the engineers working on the big one. Yeah, the engineers working on the on the the, uh, the big one. Yep. You have one and still then, like ha hiding underneath the table, like whimpering and crying. Okay, good. Um, so. I want to use athletics mm -hmm. to run, jump off the table, and just smash my body into the um, the construct that is kind of holding its own against the the security guard. Okay. Okay. Um, so it's athletics, so it's a, a steal. And then it's, I'm gonna use a joker for another success, that's two. Okay. And then I'm out of cards with that. Um, so I get to draw cards, but I, I lose a turn because I have to recover. Now you can do what Icarus is doing. You can, each turn, you can just draw blind. So you get to draw one card and play it if you can. Or you could lose your next turn and redraw your, because you get to draw seven, right? Yep. So I figure since I'm running and jumping into the air and, and doing silly athletic stuff and throwing my body, that I get, I hit my head in the process. <laughs> You're and, just kind of like, Ugh. <laughs> and I'm stunned. So I, I'll lose a turn and then, but I'll draw cards. So okay. I'll come up back up nice and refreshed. So with your, you had two successes on that, right? Your Joker mm -hmm. and, all right. So with your first success, you will just hit it and kind of knock it down. So both uh, you, the bodyguard and the construct all kind of go tumbling to the ground. Uh, with your second success, I will allow you to uh, apply a, what you call it? Condition? Yes trying to think of one that is appropriate for throwing your body. Um, so, I suppose stun probably isn't quite the right one, but something like that where it's like days or... Something like that. You know what? Let's make it dramatic. So you go, you, you're like run you jump off of the table you just kind of go ah like a you know like a sweet conan movie you're diving over taking people out you take both of them down uh the bodyguard kind of falls and tumbles over towards the table that the other scientist is hiding under uh he's just kind of on the ground looks up the construct that you knock over actually gets knocked over enough to where uh a, ta a, a chair that had been turned over as people were getting up and kind of running uh, it falls and kind of gets the chair leg stuck through it and it's kind of like trying to get up so it will be stunned against this chair it will still be able to attack anything in range but it can't get up all right I would say something quippy, but I'm knocked out momentarily. <laughs> and you are knocked out for the next round. Awesome. Okay, so now it is the bad guy's turn. Uh, Mr. Big Guy will reduce one level of stun against himself. The uh, one that the other one that is stunned will remove his son so that he can actually get up next turn. And the third one is still pinned down, so it's not getting up anytime soon. Okay. 
and that brings us back to one more round and uh, Bertoldi will have this thing shut down. Hopefully. If nothing else happens to him. But it's your guys' turn. Again. So back at the top would be Jebediah who is uh, hit his head and uh, out, for, out for the round. Brings us to Brock. So uh, Brock's extrusion blades are gonna squirt back in and that the screaming that you heard and his head's finally gotten to him and Brock's just going to heave and ah! for the round and take a breath. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then it is Ren. Um, what was I going to do? What what needs stunning? Because yeah, I'm gonna use the anesthetic elixir. Um, the uh, the bladed construct will come back to life next round, so it will lose its stun. So you could apply another stun to help stop the power downs cycle. Uh, or if you wanted to, uh, if you have spades, you could try to help out the uh, engineer that is trying to shut it down and use your necro neurological programming. To try to access its programming. I'm going to keep it stunned for, for one uh, spade. The bladed one. All right. So uh, give me that. Uh, you're only gonna need one success. Bang. So that will uh, add that other other level of stunnage. Then it goes to Icarus. All right. So using. RKO piloting. I would like to follow up on what Ren just did and charge into that construct for a bit of damage, maybe a trauma. But I gotta play blind for that. So <laughs> it says that I can play up to my old normal. Yeah, the number of cards that I can normally play. So, because of that, and then I draw two cards whenever I play blind. Draw, pick the five of spades, mm -hmm. and then draw, pick the two of spades. There so, two go. successes, ramming speed. Two successes, I imagine as the speed. drone rams in, it just falls apart. Uh, it's not that it falls apart, it kind of careens off. Uh, the spikes that you had put off on it are now kind of sticking in that the uh, in the the metal armor. Uh, they have fallen off your drone. Like you pretty much just you know super glued them real quick, and they've come off. <laughs> uh, the gum wasn't as strong as I thought it would be. Right, uh, but that is two damage to the knifed guy, and you get to choose a condition or a trauma. Trauma, see who play. All right, so that will take a trauma. Wait, that was French. Whoops, we're in Italy. And just so that you guys know, to give you a good heads up, you have melted this thing's armor. So any more damage that you guys are going to be doing against it is going to be all trauma. Okay. Once you can get past stress, it's it goes down quick. All right. But now I'm going to start getting dirty since you guys are doing well. Gross. So I can't reboot up Mr. Mr. Slices a lot because you do have him stunned, but he will remove one of his stuns. Uh, still has one more. 
the uh, engineer does manage to get into the programming and does shut down mobility. So this thing cannot move, but it can still attack. Not a fan of that. Neither would other people. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> so it is going to try and slice at the engineer, uh, which he does, and he's going to impose a condition against him, which will make it harder to do anything else. The uh, other one will continue to be uh, held down uh, it's been punched a couple times by these uh, by these bodyguards, and they've kind of beat it down over time. It starts to you can see that it's starting to move a little bit more sluggish, uh, but it's taken two of them many many rounds to to get this thing down just with their hands. Uh, the one that Jebediah had knocked over uh, did get rid of his stun and is getting up. Kind of just like breaks off the table, the, the chair leg, throws it away, and pulls it out the back. Very Terminator esque. Stands up and goes for the one who did it, Jebediah. So I am going to inflict. Oh, what can I do? Hmm, I can do one thing. This is a new round, so I can fight back, right? This is a new round, so you could fight back. Uh, I am going to just inflict <clears throat> trauma. He's going to try and uh, pop your head off like a uh, jar of jam. So if you want to try and get out of the way, that will be your action. That will be a... Uh, it either be athletics, resistance, or uh, even dexterity, if you wish. What if... <laughs> I respond um, by shoving the repeating crossbow where the the head would be and pulling the trigger. You could also do that. I would like to. I would like that to be my response. All right. I'm gonna need that. Uh, gonna need that success. Um, I will use a. Three of clubs and a five of spades to make two successes on that. Okay. And and um, if the extra success allows me to do extra trauma, I would love to do extra trauma on this. Extra damage. However, that works to make this thing not pop my head off. Well, since you don't want this thing to pop your head off. I'm going to read it since you said that you wanted to shoot exactly where its eyes sockets were. I'm going to count that as being accurate. I, I was thinking more of like under the jaw. Oh, like right under so it. that So like if you take it, you shoot so that it goes right through the front of all the sensing things. Gotcha. All right. So we will still use that as accurate. And then you will do your uh, damage as normal. It just so happens that the trauma on this guy is only three and you do three. So you were able to pretty much blow this head off. The arms are still, they still have you, and you can kind of feel like the strength of it is kind of crushing your skull as its head just kind of goes off. For a second, you're like, oh, this didn't work. And then it's slowly like, it's still like bicey. So your head's still kind of squeezed, but it stopped. So it's still got you held, <laughs> but, it, but it's not moving. You could pretty much just like get out from it. Um, and is it and is it uh, able to be told or known that the big one is not able to move or not able to like move but can still attack? Can I? Do I have that under? Uh, do you have that knowledge? Yes. No. Damn. Okay. All right. Then I have it goes to save to, it uh, for a quick that quit for another time. <laughs> uh, 
Hey guys, it is 9.40. Do you want to take a quick 10 minute break? I'm actually a little hot over here. Sure, sounds good. I hear. Hey, uh, tell my, tell my peeps. So everyone, we're gonna take a quick 10 minute break. Probably by the time that we come back and uh, finish this little uh, scene, some uh, information will be, be revealed. And then uh, I think we will probably be done with it the next 20, 30 minutes. And then we'll just uh, do a little quick review. That is uh, good with everybody. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in about 10 minutes.
And we are back from our little, little break. We got some drinks and potties going. But now we're going to finish up this combat with this bladed construct. So where did we leave off? I had already forgot. As soon as we went to break, I did a total wide wipe. Just... <laughs> yes, Jebediah, Jebediah took out the uh, the second aberrant construct. Heroically. So then it was Brock. And uh, since it is my turn, I am going to once again resume wailing on the big one. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to use my extrusion blades again. And I am going to uh, throw a hell at it again and uh, use one spade and one uh, five and one four so that I have a nine. So two successes. Two successes. So that I can once again inflict stun on it and do four damage. Well, lucky for you, it only had three left. Oh man, I stunned it to death. So as you pound this thing, you know, it, it starts. You hear, you hear more of the steam start to start to uh, poof out of places where it's not supposed to. You hear more and more of the, the gears start to slowly crank as they're like winding down, and then in, the, in that last moment where you hit that last punch, you must have hit something on the main uh, the main boiler. And the main boiler just kind of fizzes out. And, uh, all of your targets, at least the lethal ones, are now all taken care of. After the two bodyguards have, uh, beaten the crap out of the other aberrant construct, they kind of get up huffing and puffing. A lot of them have scrapes on their on their on their arms and on their faces, uh, as it had been trying to headbutt them to get them off. Uh, you still hear the crying and wailing, uh, the lovely aroma of urine, uh, as the scientist underneath the table continues to cry. And as Brock finishes off that last punch, uh, Bertoli kind of looks up at you and goes, "I had it." I'm pretty sure you're about as trustworthy as the machine. What makes you say that? You have no proof. I, I look at Philippe, who's unconscious but alive. I have him. And I have you. Uh, in, in me being here, that has nothing to do with anything. I was here merely enjoying a a nice high class dinner. If you think this motherfucker under the table will peeing himself is gonna stand up to any type of interrogation and not implicate you, you don't know how people work. You have spent too much time dealing with constructs. Well it is my job. Plus let's face it. You really think Philippe didn't do this and keep some kind of trail? No doubt he had to have kept some form of paper trail just so that he'd have something on you in the end as well. So we have... Well, you may think that. Him. I don't think that he is that smart. Hey, Icarus. Hmm. Uh, if you want to report this to Inspector Magnetti so that he can start searching the offices of these gentlemen. Yeah, Icarus is going to get the radio set up <laughs> and, and put it on. Phone. <laughs> Can I set it so that like the output goes to a, like, a set of headphones, but the input is like a speaker microphone? So that whoever I'm talking to can also pick up the conversation as evidence. Yes. Yes. Do this. Yeah. 
they're not they're not cool headphones. They're like the the old headphones that came with like CD players. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> Big bulky. Oh no, they're like the little the like the plastic oh, ones like that the always plastic broke. Oh, yeah, like yeah. The tiny oh, ones that like the, most ooh. of the time didn't even fit all the way over your head. Oh uh, like, yeah. Very oh. uncomfortable in the ears. Ooh. Oh man. Imagining it's a set of those, but then also the fuzz from like weird handcuffs is on the top just for comfort. Oh uh, yeah. Like yeah, because it doesn't have the original fuzz on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the original fuzz is gone. I also picture that one of them just is always fully extended. Because oh, yeah. that yeah. wear and tear. Yeah. Just always hanging down. Yeah. Definitely. So, uh, what do you report back to the Citadel? Uh, oh, goodness. As you're kind of oh. setting this all up, uh, Ren, right, under, right underneath you, <clears throat> uh, Livio kind of starts to come to. It's kind of like, what will have happened? Still kind of working off the days of the stun. Yeah, I'm going to sort of just like stick my uh, my boot on his back. You know, clearly uh, he shouldn't try again, though. Well, where is my family? Family's yes, dead. <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, as soon as you say that, he looks over at the uh, two aberrant constructs. Uh, the one that the uh, bodyguards had pretty much beaten. And then the other one that uh, Jebediah had blown the uh, brain cavity out of. And you see, you see uh, Livio, he starts to cry. As he, as he just stares at the bo- at the, uh, the bodies of the constructs. Then he shakes his head and he's like, no, no, they, they, they weren't my family. And he points at uh, Aureli. It's like, that bastard, that bastard lied to me. But what should I expect from those murderers? I wanted my family back. What do they do? They give me three random constructs. Of course they match the height and build of my family. Sick, twisted sadists. They're the heartless ones. And he like, he, you can see his, like, his hand and reaches out like he wants to, to touch them. He's like, They're the heartless ones, not these, not these poor broken con. So what was it, Chris, going to report back to the Citadel? Goodness. How much should I even tell them, right? Because hmm. Inspector Manetti, was it, right? Manetti. Manetti, he wasn't old certain things. Probably because this group controlled the flow of information. So, hmm, how much do I tell him before it becomes a danger to his safety and our safety? It's a question. Oh. E. Hello, Inspector. We. Uh, have found the source of the malfunctioning constructs. Yeah, yeah. What'd you find? Uh, a group of scientists. <laughs> are, are you? A, you just hear you a, silence for a second, and then. <laughs> It's like scientists. What do you mean, scientists? Like from here? Uh, from there? From around? Uh, are you alone, sir? Right now? 
Might want to yes. ask everyone to leave. Yeah, you're alone? I, okay. I am in my office. What? Okay. Uh... There seems to be a group of individuals, sir, that want to find a way to make constructs go haywire, sir. That that is all. That is it. To make them go haywire. Yes. Yeah. So you're saying that scientists purposefully are making constructs go haywire? That seems to be it. <sighs> How exactly are you doing this? Uh, are you close enough that they can hear can you do hear this? The, yeah, at least probably, his side yeah. of things. Yeah, can I hear this side of things? Because I feel like I would have jumped in and shouted something at this point. Oh yeah, yeah go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get to the part about the drugs yet? Just go to their office and take their records. They probably have it there. Uh, it's like, well, I just, I can't just go and. Like, who is that? <laughs> it's like, I just can't go into some random person's office and start taking stuff. I need names. I'll shout out the names uh, as the one that ran away first, if I know his name. Uh, it, he was named by one of the other ones that was Ezio. Yeah, Ezio and Bertoli. Is, is the one under that's hiding, uh, peeing his pants, do we have a name for him? Uh, no, pee pants is un, unnamed pee pants. Um, I'm just gonna kind of stick my head under the table. Um, hey, what's your name? My name, my name is John. And it just reeks of urine. Underneath this table. All right, uh, John. Yeah. John, what? Husek. <laughs> John, you got a last name? Mike Michelson. Mike Michelson. Michelson. I don't. John I, Michelson. I don't want to die. I'm not even supposed to be here. Sure, Dante. Um, we can figure this all out. You, you'll tell us you'll, when we get back to the Citadel. You'll tell them what how it went down, right? I didn't see much, but I can. Is it okay to come out? Are, are you going to tell? Are you going to work with us here? Are you on my side here? I'm not sure you, what you want me to say. I Like I said, I'm not even supposed to be here. My boss told me to come. You were witness to the conversation that was had here until... Oh, yeah, yeah. I can, yeah. Wait, wait, boss. Who do you work for? Who are you speaking to? <laughs> that was a good question, John. Who do you work for? I work. I work for the Citadel. I, I work for an, an individual named, named Petraeus. Petraeus. I'm sorry, his name's Petraeus. <laughs> is no. his first name General? Petraeus. Oh, Petraeus. oh, oh. Put, put the P. It, it, oh, okay. Is Petraeus his first name General by any chance? Um. No, yeah. Um. Doctor Petraeus. Doctor Petraeus's office as well. You might want to check there too. <laughs> not, not, um, not Petraeus. Petraeus. <laughs> Doctor <laughs> Betrayus, I never Dr. saw it coming. <laughs> I never saw it coming. Um. Uh, yeah. So, so John, we just we just need you to report back um, to, to our supervisors in, in the Citadel what happened, and that that's it. Let me know <laughs> you hear, you know. uh, uh, Icarus, you hear on the on the other end, uh, Benetti's see hear like a bunch of papers and files moving around. It's like, uh, 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 it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I, I have it here. Okay, yes, he works. Yes, he's one of the engineers. Yes, okay. Seems that he was, yes, okay, yes, I will send the security detail to his office. 
I, I'm not sure if it actually works this way, if I or if I actually have to be on the location. Um, but I will shout out my bureaucratic pro, uh, process information oh. to help, um, if that will help at all in the um, obtaining of the of proper documents that may be needed for the searches. It will make it a lot faster, yes. So while all of this is going on and you guys are reporting in, uh, Livio is still kind of just mumbling to himself about how, you know, these scientists are the heartless ones and, uh, you know, it wasn't all of the constructs fault. And then he starts to, uh, he starts to go into more detail and it's, it's stuff that kind of sparks, uh, not memories, but it sparks in your guys' head because they, they said they wanted to save the souls in the brains. But they didn't even hesitate at slaughtering those poor guys. And then, then they asked me to fetch a spare monitor so they can see the results. And then they watched the killings as if they were entertained. Humans being slaughtered is little more than their test subjects. You would think that these people were contracts themselves. They seem to care about being but the chemical reactions in the brains and not of the people. As if they were cattle. Just being led to slaughter, processed. He goes, oh, wait. But I have him by the balls. I got you all by the balls. And he like goes into his jacket. No. No, they must have took it. Oh, where is it at? Take out the tape. You have it's, it. Yes. Yeah, what is it? I, you fuckers, I got them all. And it's transcripts. I recorded every fucking thing I ever said. Oh, really? I, I looked directly at the scientist who said he's not smart enough to think that and say, who's the idiot now? Yeah. Yeah, the Becca Morty forced me to keep them. But you know what? I'll give them to you. Fuck them all. I don't care. You have to arrest everybody. Everybody. We will. Um, we're already uh, working on their connections back at the Citadel. Um, got to got to arrest scientists. Those guys. And he points at the the other two, uh, or actually the other three bodyguards. He goes, "Yeah, you have to arrest those too. You have to arrest them too." And you know what? Take me in. Everybody. Everybody needs to be arrested. It'll be a pleasure to break rocks under the sun or whatever it is for the rest of my days. As long as all of these soulless individuals just go down and they're sweating and cursing with me. I'm sure with your cooperation, we could probably get you something a little bit nicer than breaking rocks. And I'm going to look at the bodyguards and like... Yeah, between your uh, repeating crossbow, uh, the man in the power suit, <laughs> uh, and just the overall scene that has just occurred, they're they're just kind of like, like they drop their sticks, they're just kind of like whatever. <laughs> we're not, no, we're not getting into this. Good choice. Once we get everything back to the Citadel, we can get everything squared away. We can have a. a more proper discussion about what comes next for you looking at the bodyguards and what we may be able to do to help land you in a because you so like I said I don't care as long as all these bastards go down I'll happily serve my time but we'll get every one of them that we can like as you're Handcuffing everyone up. Uh, yeah, he's he's still staring at the two aberrant constructs. And you still see tears in his eyes, still coming down. It's like, they're my family. They're my family. Now, Icarus, what are you going to do with that tape? Hmm. 
don't know if I have a team player on me. So I'd have to go build one. <laughs> and, and then <laughs> I'll give it a listen. And, and then another thing to record the copy on, too. And to record it with, yeah. All right, so you're going to do that before you get back to the Citadel or after? Or before. I just grab whatever scrap I can, try and get something together. All right, takes you a couple hours while you guys are still loading everybody up. Uh, you've had to call, you know, Benetti ends up sending a uh, quote-unquote, like, you know, paddy wagon but it takes a couple of hours to get there. Oh, if we're going to be here for a couple of hours, I, I'm also going to use trace search and see what evidence I can dig up while I'm here. So as far as, so let's go with the tape first. So the tape, uh, as you're listening to it and recording it kind of at the same time, uh, it lists many, many names. It's like full, full on recordings of conversations between known builders of the Citadel and the Becca Morty crime family uh, who was uh, if you guys remember from when I was explaining stuff that the player that the characters don't know they were the ones that were kind of like funding this whole thing hence all of their goons being around the restaurant uh it's way more than enough sufficient evidence to incriminate pretty much everyone involved. Uh, one of the main players that is speaking almost in every single dealing that has to do with, uh, you know, applying LSD to constructs is one Gertrude Bertoli, the engineer that had sent that had, you know, was the la your last contact in the Citadel. So he is like the the head front of the Citadel, you know, the head Citadel contact in this weird cultish type group, however you want to call it. Uh, Jebediah, you are able to get uh, up into, up into uh, Livio's office. You see uh, a lot of different, uh, a lot of different paperwork that has to do with uh, financial transactions between Livio himself, uh, Bertoli, and uh, the Becca Mortys. So there is a there is a proper proper uh, written handbook of money trail. Again, because there's no technology, it's not all in a database. It is simply written on paper like back in the day. So what you're saying is we got to buy the balls now. Yes. At least paperwork-wise. Paperwork-wise, you have them buy the balls. <laughs> Sinestra. So... You finally get everyone loaded up in their paddy wagons and you make your way back to the Citadel. And uh, Minetti is there to meet you. And a full-blown like internal investigation goes underway based on the findings that you guys had. You do not know what the outcome is because after a month of investigation and like internal litigation, it kind of goes silent. Bertoli is never seen again. Livio is moved to a cushy, as you so put it, uh, prison where he does break rock and sweat underneath the sun uh, for at least the next five years. Uh, pee pants scientist and uh, His boss, Doctor Not Betrayus, Doctor Petraeus, <laughs> uh, are also sent to jail. Uh, however, both of them end up being killed in a prison riot. 
kind of unfortunate. Yes, very unfortunate. Oh man, no one ever saw that coming. Yeah. No, no. Not However, that. between all of you, whether you forgot it or not, there was one that did get away. Ezekiel or whatever. Yeah, you do remember the name. Ezio. Ezio. Yes, Professor Ezio. So hopefully that will be someone that you will have to, that Benetti will again send you out into the wilds to seek after as he has not returned to the Citadel since. However, who knows? Another incident such as this could occur and your excellent team of uh, individuals will be sent to save the day once more. Because everybody needs good heroes. And that is where our story ends. Kind of uh, melancholy. But nevertheless, still one, quote unquote. Not everybody survived. But uh, that isn't always the case in some games. But since we are ending early, let's uh let's get some insight on how you guys feel about the uh, the game. Let's uh let's go round robin like always, and we'll uh, start in order. Just give me a yeah yeah sentence or two. How, how do you feel? What are some main points that you like? Maybe something you don't like. Uh, maybe maybe it's something you think that uh, could be improved on, or something you would like to see. Uh, you know, in the final product after the Kickstarter ends. Uh, I gotta say, I do appreciate the idea of uh, drawing a set amount of cards and then being able to like, pre-plan your action pull out a little bit because uh, as somebody like myself, uh, we all know my dice pool <laughs> Your dice up, uh, <laughs> uh, failing me regardless. So at least this way, <clears throat> I can kind of pre-plan, you know, all right, I'm going to do this, which means, cool, I have this card, it's going to be good, and then I can kind of finagle something later on, and then I'm just SOL, but hey, I can push my luck. Maybe I might make it. Yeah, you never know. Um, I think maybe I'd like to see the, the difficulties, um, the way the cards work, um, change a little bit. Um, it's definitely something that coming from a background of systems where there's not that um, action we're not kind of uh, having to keep track of your actions and you're not having that con that constriction mm -hmm. um, on what you're doing um, it's kind of a it is kind of a, a different way to play that I'm not used to um I imagine if you're, you're used to playing D D and you have spell slots where you have a limited number of spells, you're used to kind of managing them better. Um, when you're used to just, I've got this many dice to roll, and I can just keep rolling those dice. Yeah, keep rolling those same dice. You always um, have that. Yeah. I, yeah. So oh, you always have a a better chance. Yeah. Succeeding so, than yeah. It, it's not so much. It's just the. The measuring out and it it was a bit of adjustment um for people who are used to playing where they have to kind of keep track of what they're doing that way and they have limited or actions that they can spend it might it might work out better for them um, it definitely is there was an adjustment period and there was a learning period um, of that and I think that while for a ongoing campaign, if you're going to be playing, you know, 10, 15, 20 sessions of it, that's something that can be overcome pretty quickly. If you're doing a one shot at a convention or if you're doing just a, you know, 
one or a two part game if you're not used to that it's going to be a bit of a shock yeah yeah definitely JT um yeah like like Don was saying I, I like the uh the idea that you can pre-plan your actions a little bit you like have an idea of what you can do um but then when you don't have any anything to when you don't have the right set of cards then it doesn't feel great even if you're good at something um and that's part of the random it's just the random chance is different um and um and i think it would get some getting used to but i, I think it's an interesting system and I, I'm, i'd be interested to see it uh, play out some more okay and i love the setting setting yeah the, the setting uh, is yeah when i when i first read it I, re I read the manuscript for it i was like this is it's very nice and and like i said during the first episode like everybody should check out what they already had posted as far as the quick start on their kickstarter because it has some of that lore in it and while that lore is only like two pages long the lore that i have is like 19 pages just about you know what is the citadel boom here's two or three pages of that you know what is florence now uh and it would be interesting to see if later on whether after the kickstarter uh you know after they they had their final product out after the kickstarter or even if it is uh something as a uh, as a backer kit that they expand it i don't know if they're going to expand it past florence is florence just going to be like that main city that everything works out of you know, kind of like in 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 D and D, where everything yeah, you have this huge map, but most of the stuff is either going to be out of Neverwinter or Waterdeep. Like, not a lot of stuff starts outside of that. <laughs> uh, there's got to be somewhere else in this world where there has to be some type of city safeness somewhere. Ah, uh, for me, yeah, I'm imagining like maybe there's like a Moscow. Where everyone right. sends the cons like their own versions of constructs out into the mm -hmm. snow, yeah. that type of thing. Uh, while it isn't going to be, it, it is one of their their long stretch goals. It was like their eighty five thousand. So it, uh, I'll, I'll keep my fingers crossed. However, only having five days, yet, I probably think that they're not going to hit it. However, they were going to have at the eighty five thousand. It was uh, the actual template to make a construct, so you could make your own. It would go through step by step on how to make a construct like what are their stats and all of this so that you could you know build them instead of just having the ones like in this in this quick start or i think it gave me like four or five that would that would be something that i would like to see definitely as a backer kit Uh, personally for me, running it, um, I do love the world, uh, the lore is very awesome, uh, just the story of it, you know, we always think of, you know, apocalypse things being very, very bad and very destructive, and this takes a, you know, this takes the baby crawl approach to where things went bad, but it was, wasn't because of it, you know, no one hit a button, nobody hated anybody enough, it was just, shit started dying and no one knew why. Um, so it is definitely a, a different mindset that you have to get yourself into, even if you are, even if you have played, you know, an apocalyptic game in the past. Uh, because you, there is no, there's no enemy. You know, you're, you're not going, you're not going against zombies. You're not going against, you know, mutated monsters or anything. Uh, if I was to run this on my own without I honestly don't know what approach I would take to it. I, I don't know what my story would be to, to write. So I'm, I'm very interested. I know they've already hit three or four of their stretch goals are more adventures that they've written out. I'm very interested to see those, uh, just to see where other writers have, this, which direction other writers have decided to go if they stay in this same kind of, you know, uh, constructs malfunctioning or people trying to use constructs for nefarious reasons. Maybe somebody tries to build an army out of them. You know, the theft of 
you know, regular agricultural uh, constructs have occurred and you got to go investigate it, that might be something. The cult of reawakening. Right, yeah. Maybe maybe this adventure spins off into something else to where, yeah, something weird like that. They're trying so to got, bring... I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, they got, yeah, they got three adventures right now. Um, and then, but the next, like, eight stretch goals... Uh, Noir Enigma, uh, Daniel, I'm not going to pronounce his last name right, um, but it's Drock on Twitter, Steffi Devon, Ghana Gaming, Peter Nalo, Matthew Dawkins, Keith Asada. So if the money can keep coming in, if it gets up to, we could get up to like eight new adventures if people just throw money at the Kickstarter. Yeah, just just start throwing money at it, guys. Just... You, you every, can pledge, every, you yeah, can pledge little more than what, the, than what your, what your uh, the, the, the suggested amount for your, whatever your tier reward is. It's just a suggested amount. You can go over that. Yeah, I, I'm, I am interested in their card deck as well. Uh, probably make it a little bit easier to play. Um, there, there's a lot of things that I'm very that I'm very interested in uh, I have to double check and make sure that I did back it I'm pretty sure I did but <laughs> I was backing a whole bunch of stuff that weekend so I have to make sure that I did this one <laughs> um, everyone at home go check make sure you're backing it too yeah everybody yeah, yeah just yeah check your back projects and make sure that Necrobiac is one of them um, the the uh, the quick start gives us, you know, the pre-made characters. I'm I'm very interested in how you would make a character itself. It 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 doesn't have from there, what I have, it doesn't have any uh there are other classes that were not in the kickstart. Yes. So there are gonna be other classes as well. Um I, I'm I'm guessing there's because it's a quick start, you know, if you're going to have a quick start, you have pre-made characters for it. Right. But as a character creation, you might have a little wiggle room. So as an example, that could have just been part of the quick start that I, that the militia guy didn't have combat. Yeah. Not necessarily that everybody in a militia wouldn't have combat. Certainly. I don't think a fair number of them would. <laughs> That's true. It kind of seemed like uh, militia had a bit of the uh, bureaucratic in it as well. Yeah. yeah, like militia was more of the yell at you cop than an actual ran around the block bullet, chasing yeah. you. Oh, yeah. there, there, there's definitely the the the, um, the cop feel at least for the, the pre-made character. Um, I imagine the book itself is going to have more than just the quick blurb on the different um we'll say classes as well yeah so there may it may go into more de- it's probably to go more into detail about what's in the militia is how it's organized different factions within the militia um you know these are these are things i'm interested in seeing you know what's there and just kind of as world building um these are things that if if I were creative enough to come up with something this expansive, but the, the kind of the things that you see when you have factions is, or, you know, organizations is kind of factions within them, or right. special roles within them. Yeah, because it is kind of, I, I I do feel that the, you know, the pre-maids are, are very, they are very broad. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like, you know, an architect is, is just an architect, but you would think that within the architect hierarchy, there should be, you know, you should have builders or you should have, you know, the, the, I don't even know. People like who the, specifically work on the living as opposed to those who work on the dead. Right. Yeah. Something like that. And, and you know, and within the militia, you've got the, you know, the, the, the ones within the city, I'm sure are very different from the ones that are out in the wild. I'm sure they have, you know, a different structure, uh, probably different skill sets. The domesticated militia is probably different from the wild, yeah. Yeah. 
like so that, that would be something that <laughs> <laughs> the wild ones probably have more color to them but yeah a little greener a little greener yeah um, i i personally would like to see a little bit better explanation if not some specific rules on kings and how oh yes uh, and how they should affect the character because it i mean it, it tells you that you're supposed to play your king right away if you draw it you're supposed to play it right away and then you have to satisfy that whatever it says within the next round or within the next action but they're kind of vague now this yeah. may be, be they yeah, may the, be because it's a translation well right? yeah like like mine uh, the king is uh, garish you bear conspicuous scars of a death averted last second with makeshift treatments, always visible, revolting as well as painful. Aside from the RP aspect of it, it doesn't really seem like it. Yeah, I mean, it and, even explains in the rules that it, it's supposed to be RP, uh, but like that one, it doesn't. It's, does it mean that it's bad and people are disgusted, and or or should you cover yourself yeah. up before you have to? You know, yeah, yeah. So, or whatnot. It's it's very it's very open for interpretation. <laughs> yeah, my king didn't really seem like something that I could role play. It sounded like something that people around me would have to do because it wasn't it wasn't it was uh, essentially you get bullied. That that's the cutting through everything the dumbed down explanation of what my king was. Yeah, yours was, yeah, you were often harassed and hindered. Yeah, you essentially get bullied. And that's, as a player, that's not something that you can really, that's something that you have to put on the rest of the table to do or to the... Um, yeah, see, I would think of that as more like <clears throat> you have a plus one complication on certain roles when people are doing that. Same yeah. thing like mine, I would expect it to be more like you have a plus one complication on social roles. Social roles, yeah. Something like that, since mine's a physical, you know, uh, deformity of some form, which might uh, cause them to look at me with some, you know. I don't know. And, you know, at yeah. the same time, it, it could have been written in there somewhere and I might have just missed it. And it was supposed to be all on me to be like, okay, you hold your king. Read it to us. What is it? Okay, now you do have that, that condition. I, I mean, it, it could have fallen on me. I don't know. I, I, I was playing my character straight from the uh, quick start from the backer um, Kickstarter than the word doc that you sent us. So. It, yeah, I, I don't remember seeing. In the manuscript, though, that if you couldn't play it out, you'd take a trauma. So I think that might have been intended to cover it. Like the stress of being ostracized starts to get to your character instead of you <laughs> playing it outright. Okay, that's uh, fair. All right, so yeah, if you if you're in a a social situation and you you just can't handle that, you automatically take a social trauma. I, not. It does make things feel a little lopsided for certain characters, like ostracized. There are situations where you can't play out ostracized, but I, with my king of not being able to smell could usually play that out <laughs> yeah, like, right so i wouldn't be taking the trauma right in most situations i can just see you playing with some chemicals and getting it wrong because of it and that's why you uh suffer your complication yeah i wonder if uh especially for the jacks the queens and the kings uh if there's going to be like a like you could choose from these two choices of what you want your jack you know, these two or three choices of what you want your jack to be. Uh, maybe the number changes, maybe the suit would change. Uh, and then, you know, the power would change as well. But, you know, for, a, so, an, for an architect, you would have three different jacks that you yeah. could choose from. Kind of like my armor. You know. I had yeah. the option of the extrusion blades of a harpoon and then the uh, power assisted thrust for the flash. Yeah, I, I, I would... I would hope to see that, and if it's not in there, I hope to see it in the future. Uh, with how it seems to be written, I think some of them are just general talents that you could get. Like, yeah. 
Again, I, I haven't seen have yeah, really good balance. Yeah, that I haven't seen like a, a full. Thing. Yeah, I haven't seen a full character creation. You know, I don't. You know, they send me what I'm supposed to have. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I haven't seen the full character creation, so yeah, that could be a could be a full thing. Special abilities could be you know locked to one specific archetype, or it could be general. I don't know. Uh, I think my one critique about this game mm -hmm. would just be the playing blind. It seems a little oddly specific, and it felt like to get there you have to do a little work to do something that would otherwise just be uh, like a looming threat. Mm. Just how it's worded with how you need your hand empty. I think if it was changed to just you could always play blind if nothing in your hand really works for the situation, then it's like the constant choice is looming over you instead of trying to hang on to your cards for a while. That, that makes any sense. It's a so, rule, is it not? So you're talking like just dumping your hand and immediately going to playing blind as your action? Yeah, like <laughs> if I have cards in my hand, and from my understanding, you can't play blind. Yeah. You can't just grab a card. I'm like, I don't want to use any of these cards. I'm just going to try it and see what this does. But, but yeah. you're thinking of it like as a part of your thing is you get to completely dump and begin no, playing. No, no, no. Not even dump. You just... hold on to your hand, but you just take cards off the top of the deck instead of using your I've hand. I've got... Oh, so, okay. That would be pushing. I... Oh, but okay. It's, it's a little different, the pushing. Because, That's discarding yeah, a card and then yeah. adding to a task. It, if I have cards that, like, might work for a certain situation, but don't work for the specific situation in hand, and I, uh, like, it would be cool to take a card and just play it, Mm. automatically instead of choosing between dumping something that I might have I, I feel like wrong. that would be a special ability though because I mean that's basically pushing it it's just without the taking of the extra the dumping yeah, the that's card. where that's where the two different versions of successes comes in because you can always yeah. succeed by suit and then you can always succeed by eight so if you didn't have the suit and you didn't you couldn't make eight like let's say you were only allowed to play you could play two cards, but all you had was a four and a two, and neither of the suits masked, matched. You could play the four and then say that you wanted to push and hope like that I that card earlier. that you drew was a four or higher, because then you could still make the eight. That, that was literally exactly what happened to me earlier. I had the four and the two, I dumped the two, pushed it, got a four of uh, spades, and got two successes off of it. If I'm seven, sitting on a seven of clubs and an eight of or in our six of hearts but I, the suit that i need is a diamond i'm really gonna just be like um can i pass um because it's those are two high you know high value cards i don't want to that are right. useful i can't technically play them because they're not the right suit i can't play another card with them I, there's no way to add up. Um, yeah. There's a system that presents a challenge, but I don't feel like it's a fun challenge. Needing to be like, I gotta hang on to these two cards. And I wait. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, that, that whole part, like, the whole uh, dump what you have in your hand to refresh your deck, I feel like you should be allowed to just keep certain cards too in the instance of if you're refreshing your you're wasting your turn by not doing anything you should be able to keep what cards you might find useful well that's a, you're only losing your turn and that, that's only in combat if you're just mm -hmm. doing it outside of combat it's just you just do it yeah but still the idea of just dumping your entire hand because what if you have the joker as your last card and you if you have the Joker as your last card, you might as well play. I'm saying, I'm, I'm <laughs> saying, like, like if, a if, seven if, of hearts in your hand. You want yeah, to keep if, that for something that's hearts related, probably. But like, if I need a diamond and I, and or if I need a, because I pulled it up there, if I need a spade and I've got a six of hearts, a six of clubs, and a six of diamonds, I've got those are good cards to use. But because I need a spade, I they kind of feel. Well, you don't need a spade. You can always just make eight. 
I, but yeah. if it's a, but if it's something that is a spade, I can't make eight with one card. The only way you'd be able to do if that I'm is not if you're, trained in it. I, I have one uh, card to use. The only um, way is if you were to uh, use the one card, the push the limit, and then you technically can get that second card off the top. And since you have all sixes, you wouldn't feel like you had a losing chance doing that to get right. That yeah, there's ways to get around it, but. Yeah, like I said, it takes a lot of planning. I would hate to throw out a six and then pull an ace and still not make it. Yeah, oh, that, would, that would be shitty. Like, um, and it kind of goes back to like my original thing is like coming from a game where you just roll dice. Dice, you know, card management is not as big of a thing here. Card management is something you have to used to and some people may really enjoy that kind of aspect to it mm. um, you know uh, I, I don't play spellcasters so that I don't have to manage my spells in other games so I don't have to go okay how many uh, spells do I have left how many slots do I have open um, if, if I have arrows I, I, I just really like okay I've got arrows I'm just going to shoot uh, just shoot I'm going to cast maul just hit you with my ball. That's never gonna run out. So, and it's it, it's a stylistic thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I certainly would play the game again. Uh, just for my style of play, I'm not sure I would seek it out. I'm actually going to go back and watch some of the other uh, other individuals who have gotten that manuscript like we did and see how their game played out and see how they ran it, maybe changed uh, anything. I will I say, though, that here, the card mechanics from. do synchronize with like the narrative very well, since it seems like survival horror right. is the genre here, so you have to manage your resources. Yeah, sorry, you were saying? I was going to say, I think Carrying Comfort's doing it tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So. so for anyone that's still watching, make sure you guys check out Carrying Comfort tomorrow as they're playing Necrobiotic as well. Uh, does anybody else have any comments, concerns, hopes, dreams? Yeah, but I don't feel it's appropriate here. To bring not them appropriate up. for this? So. Yeah. Maybe in Vorpal Tales After Hours, but not here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it is a quarter to 11 Eastern Time, uh, 15 minutes before we would normally end. Uh, however, our game is over, and we have given our uh, our insight into this Kickstart that we hope that you go and check them out on the Kickstarter page. Necrobiotic, uh, brought to you by Penny for a Tail. Five days left on the Kickstart. Make sure you guys head on over, check it out, throw them with the coin if you so desire. And uh, with that, we will... Uh, yeah, let's start to get up... Uh, Get up out of here. If I can find my outro. There we go. All right. We're not going to talk about who we are. Oh, yeah. Tell everybody who you are. Yeah. But next time they can be fine. Yeah, I, don't, I can't find my script. I don't know what that. So unprofessional right now. <laughs> I am sort of sullied. And the next time you can find me will be Monday doing uh, They Came From Beyond. Yes. I have no pluggables. Uh, I, I am Zachary Naldrit, he, him. Uh, I can be found on the Twitter at Zach Rules. Um, the he, him applies there as well. Um, I write some community content, and I just wrote a, or released a supplement, which is ready-made characters for Buckmeyer. It is called Good Dogs of Harmony Acres. You can find it on DriveThruRPG. Under, uh, if you really need help finding it, you can go to the Onyx Path page on there and then clue on to Canis Miners. Um, and, and it will be there under the new because it's like the newest release. Um, Canis Miner doesn't get a lot of love from the writers because the third newest release is one that I put out in December. So you can catch that there as well. Um, next time you'll see me will be on. Tuesday night, nine-ish um, Eastern. I, I don't know. I don't live in that time zone. Um, I will be on Vancouver by night 
we are playing D and D. My character hasn't died yet. Doesn't know what he's doing, but he hasn't died. So I got that going for me. Sure, I'll go. Uh, I don't know what the order is. Um, I'm JT. Uh, I would play Ren tonight, and uh, you can catch me next playing Unknown Armies tomorrow on this channel at 4 p.m. Eastern. I have been Icarus. I am also Kikisama. You can find me on Twitter at Trikisama. You can find me tomorrow in un, uh, Unknown Armies, and you can find me behind the Denny's that remain. Wow. I've only burnt a couple down. It's okay. Yes. Only destroyed their bathrooms. <laughs> uh, but I would like to thank all of you uh, for joining me on this trip into Necrobiotic. Again, I would like to say to all of our viewers, make sure you guys check out Necrobiotic on uh, the Kickstart. Five more days left to go. Help them reach those sweet, sweet stretch goals. Uh, as for Purple Tales, if you guys are looking for more terrifying tales, make sure you guys are checking out Unknown Armies tomorrow uh, evening, and then Vampire the Masquerade. Starlight and Smoke late Sunday evenings. Uh, and then, what happens after that? Because all of this stuff written on my screen doesn't happen next weekend because what? Onyx Path Con. Ah. Yes, make sure you guys go to the Onyx Path channel, Onyx Path Publishing, and check out Onyx Path Con, June 11th, 12th, and 13th. Check out the schedule. See all the cool games that we'll be playing over four different channels. What? Yes. Who's we? I'm only going to be at two of them. I, I, I don't even know how many I'm going to be on. I lost count again. It was like two and now it's four. <laughs> but hey, it's going to be all fun and we are going to be doing it live for all of you viewers. And make sure you guys do check it out because, hey, you might get to play some games yourself. But yes, check out that calendar and do cool stuff. And then check out our calendar on our website, warpathales.com. And all of our social media links, our recaps, and links to our partners and affiliates. I think that is all that we have for this evening. And if our... Yes. And, uh, yeah. We're gonna head out again. Onyx PathCon this weekend. Following weekend, June 11th, 12th, 13th. And check out Necrobotic Kickstarter. With that, I think we are going to raid... Care...